Hey, CME family, Betuabu, Benabetu. I come before you all uh, in the name of the Most High Yah. Um, I greet you all in the name of his son, Messiah, some call him Yeshua Hamashiach. And I wanted to uh, bring this word that the Most High had dropped in my spirit that I've been kind of sitting on it for um, about over a week. Um, because there was another message that the Most High had given me, another teaching that I did about what lies beyond. Because over the past few months, um, you know, some tragic tragedy had struck um, uh, with my family and some close, a close friend of mine's where um, we've had some people that have passed away. And so the Most High had um, laid a teaching on my heart about what lies beyond. And so I had to get that one out first, even though I was working on this one before that, but that was pressing on my heart. So um, I put that out about a week or so ago, and I, I've been kind of sitting on this one, and I just um, found the opportunity now to go ahead and um, try to get this uh, this this out to you all. So um, I'm going to go ahead and jump right into it. This uh, topic here, um, some of the times the way how the Holy Spirit will lead you is not always, you know, the easiest things for people to take. Uh, but sometimes we need some hard lessons because, um, you know, some of us, we have just been so accustomed to hearing the little fluff messages, the ones that tickle our ears. And the times that we are living in is that, you know, some of us need some a, a, a rude awakening to the realities that we are facing because the times that we're in you know things i know there are a lot of people saying things are going to get better and you know we're going to get through this whole c19 thing and because we have a a, a a remedy that is being distributed by the governments of this world we think <clears throat> that this is going to cure everything and that we're going to get back to life as as normal but see we're not discerning the times. And so this word that the Most High had dropped in my spirit um, talks about the times that we are facing. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and we are gonna jump into this um, teaching that he's laid on my heart and it's called, Are We Our Fathers? Are We Our Fathers? with a subtitle of is behavior ingrained? Is behavior ingrained? Um, there's a term called genetic predisposition. Some may believe in it, some may not. I personally believe that there is such a thing as genetic predisposition. From Wikipedia, the definition is a, gen a genetic predisposition is a genetic characteristic which influences the possible phenotypic development of an individual organism within a species or population under the influence of environmental conditions. In medicine, genetic susceptibility to diseases, uh, to disease refers to a genetic predisposition to a health problem, which may eventually be triggered by particular environmental or lifestyle factors such as tobacco smoking or diet, genetic testing, is able to identify individuals who are genetically predisposed to certain diseases. Um, as a paramedic, those of you who have heard uh, my story or who have watched any of my teaching, um, you know that I work for a uh, major fire department um, as a paramedic, as a paramedic instructor. I taught at the University of Miami uh, Medical Training and Simulation Lab for a while. And one of the things that we would talk about when we we're talking about diseases is how there's certain genetic factors for certain diseases. And so um, when it comes on to uh, susceptibility to certain of these diseases, it can be passed down genetically. Um, the term phenotype is a set of observable characteristic or trait of an organism. So why am I uh, talking about this? Because when it comes to our people, you can see certain observable patterns of behavior that can be traced back to our ancestors. 
um, in Amos chapter three, verse seven, it says, surely Yah does nothing, will do nothing, but he revealeth his secrets unto his servants, the, prop, the prophets. The lion has roared, who will not fear? Yah hath spoken, who can but prophesy? In the times that we are in, there are things that are happening that are fulfillment of biblical prophecies right in our very right before our very eyes but when we see these things we don't look at them in the totality of what is happening and compare it to what the bible has prophesied was going to happen when you look throughout the bible before the most high brought forth his judgment upon either the people um, or even the nations but more so his people but he will always find a way to warn his people. He will always find a way to warn his people because no one could ever accuse the most high of being unfair. He gives everyone an opportunity to repent, even the ungodly, he will always give them an opportunity to repent. There's a scripture that says that the most high is not slack concerning his promises, but he is long suffering, not willing that any should perish. So when the time is coming and now is that his judgments are being poured out, he will always send a prophetic word ahead of the destruction that is coming. The lion has roared, who will not fear? Yah has spoken, who can but prophesy? See, in the last days, the Most High said he was going to pour out of his spirit, right? And so there's a last day anointing that has gone forth. And as a part of that anointing is the prophetic words that are being revealed. And many of our people are missing out on, 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 on the time of our visitation. Why? Because the Most High is raising up prophets in the midst of us. And yet, because they don't meet the particular pedigree that we think that, that the prophetic word should come through this particular person, because they don't have the degrees or they don't have the doctrines of divinity or they're not the pastor or they're not they they you know the, the self-anointed prophets see you know one of the things that I, I i look back in the bible and you know um the prophets i was having this conversation with my wife i said that people will declare themselves i'm prophet so and so and i'm prophet so and so but in many of the the, the situations when i look in the bible some of the prophets they 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 did not even how would I put this? Jeremiah, for instance. There was a time when Jeremiah said, you know what? I don't even want to speak to these people no more, right? I don't even want to prophesy unto them no more because of the way how we treated the prophets, right? To be a prophet in, for, for Isolele, right, was never a glory, glorious thing because when the Most High sends his word, it is not always a pretty word, especially when the people are not living right. Right. So um, in Second Chronicles 36 and verse 15, it says, and and Yah of their father sent to them by his messengers, rising up betimes and sending uh, um, and, and sending because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. Right. So he would always send his messengers, sending them to his people because he had compassion on them and on his dwelling place. Right, but they mocked the messengers of Yah and despised his words and misused his prophets until the wrath of Yah arose against his people till there was no remedy. Right, so once again, sometimes we think it's a glorious thing to be prophets, but look at how all the prophets throughout the Bible was treated. Some of them were killed, some of them were sawn into asunder. Jeremiah was thrown into a pit of mire and left there to starve. I mean, they, it was not a glorious thing. John the Baptist, right, was beheaded. You know, many of the disciples met with horrible fates, right? Because our people don't want to hear the truth. And especially if the truth goes up against the lifestyle that they are living, it cuts them to the core. And so instead of receiving the word of the most high and repenting, we go into the attack mode and will attack the prophets, right? Jeremiah um, 16, verse six says, thus saith Yah, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths, where is the good way and walk therein 
and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. We will not walk therein. See, this is a part of our problem is that because we want to have our own ways, we will determine what we think is the right things to do. Not what the most I tell us it's the right thing to do, but what we think is the right thing to do. So he's saying, that, listen, it's not all things that are new are good. Sometimes the old paths are the better way because where do the new paths come along? See, we, 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 we let down the standard a little bit here and a little bit there and a little bit here and a little bit there because we're constantly trying to justify the lifestyle that we're living. And so we make excuses until we have come into a lifestyle that is totally immersed in carnality or immersed in worldliness. And we think that, oh, this is acceptable to the most high. See, this is one of the arrogance of us as a human species that we think that we can be God over our own lives and we can do what we want, right? That is actually the, the, the terminology used by Satanists. Do what thou wilt is, is, is the whole of the law, right? But the Most High established his standards of behavior. And if we want to, 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 to enter into his kingdom, there's an old saying that he who has the gold make the rules. Well, the most high, he made the rules. And, and, and just because we have, we think we can intellectually manipulate and, and we can twist around things that we can, we can make up our own uh, 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 rules and, 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 and we, uh, patterns of behavior, and he should accept it of us. Well, that's not how the way, that's not the way things work. Jeremiah 35, 15 said, I have sent also unto you all my servants, the prophets, rising up early and sending them, saying, return ye now every man from his evil way and amend your doings and go not after other gods to serve them and ye shall dwell in the land which I have given to you and to your fathers, but you have not inclined your ear nor hearkened unto me. You have not inclined your ears nor hearkened unto me. Once again, the Most High does nothing without warning his people because he is not an unjust elimo. He is not unjust. So he's sending warnings by the words of his prophets. People are getting revelations in dreams and visions and people are warning others. And sometimes you get to the point where he's like, you know what, why am I even saying anything? Why am I even trying with these people? Because, you know, all I get is, I, you know, people will ignore you. They will say that you don't know what you're talking about. And so, you know, oh, if it doesn't, if the most high want to tell me something, he will speak to me directly. Okay, well, you know, the Bible says, um, I believe it was Paul that says, does all prophesy? Do all speak in tongues? Do all have the gift to teach? Everyone has been given specific anointing to operate in. Some have been given several gifts, but sometimes just because you don't have a particular gift doesn't mean that the Most High will not send somebody with that gift to you, but because you are not a uh, 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 Sometimes in our arrogance and our pride, we think that, okay, if it doesn't come directly to me or through me or through someone who I think have the pedigree, I'm not going to hear it. And sometimes the most high can use a little child to bring you a word, but because you are so, so into pedigree and intellectualism and all of this kind of stuff, you may miss the time of your visitation. Um, Isolele in slavery, right? Israel in slavery. Jeremiah 2, 14, is Israel a servant? Is he a homeborn slave? Why is he spoiled, right? So the first, um, listen, from we became a nation and the Most High took us out of the land of Egypt. Then what was the first thing that we went into? Before, <laughs> while Egypt was still fresh in our minds, because we were only in the wilderness, our ancestors was only in the wilderness for 40 years. Right. So so 40 years, you don't lose the things that has happened, especially all the power and the manifestation of the, the might of the most high, because the Bible says that he took us out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. 
miracles after miracles he, he, he performed as he poured out the plagues upon Egypt till the final one was the death of the firstborn and, and, and Pharaoh had no, no other recourse but to let the children of if he so lele go. So 40 years, and yes, maybe some people died along the way, but 40 years is not a very long time for your memory to get dim. But at the foot of Mount Sinai, when Moses delayed for 40 days, what did they start to do? Worship other gods. And so the Most High warned us that if we will, if we do not obey his word and we go after other gods, he was going to kick us out of the land and we were going to go into slavery. So what happened? The northern kingdom, if you if you, you you know the story that the kingdom was divided under Solomon. And so the northern kingdom, they went into idolatry because they uh, um, it was um, uh, Rehoboam or, 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 or Jeroboam, I forget, I always get the two of them mixed up. But he did not want the people to come back to Jerusalem to, 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 to honor the, the feast days and stuff. So what he created was uh, he set up idols in the northern kingdoms and say, listen, you can stay right here and worship these idols rather than going into, into Jerusalem because he was afraid that he would lose the people if they would have uh, joined up with the north, with the southern kingdom during the feast days. So they started off into idolatry. And what did the Most High do? He caused the Assyrians to come in and take them into captivity. And the story is told in 2 Kings 15, 29, where it says, in the days of Pekah, king of Israel, came Tiglath. Tigla Pilzer, king of Assyria, and took Ijan and Abel, I'm not even gonna try to pronounce that, and Jonoa and Kedesh and Hazor and Gilead and Galilee, all the land of Naphtali, and carried them captive to Assyria. And the king of Assyria bought men from Babylon and from Kuta and from Ava and from Hamath and from Sephravim and placed them in the cities of Samaria instead of the children of Israel. And they possessed Samaria and dwelt in the cities thereof. So when you read that story and you understand when, the, when, when during the time of Isaiah, when there was a, 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 a saying amongst the, the, the Yahudim or the Jews saying that, we don't have anything to do with the Samaritans, you will understand why, because Samaria at that time had become overrun by Gentiles. There, there was in fact a story that was told, and I think it's in one of the apocryphal books, where the land had actually rejected the Gentiles that was there and the wild animals was coming and it was tearing them up. And they had to send to the Southern kingdom to get rabbis to come and teach them the ways of the Israelites in order to try to abate the animals and the land from rejecting them. But even though they pretended to be Yahudims, but yet in secret, they were practicing idolatry. And so, you know, this was the reason why the Jews had no dealings with the Samaritans, because Samaria was filled with Gentiles. And you can see that the process of people taking over the identity of the true Yahudims, right, the true children of Yaounde, right, started from even back then, because the Gentiles had begun to adopt the Israelite religion. Um, and in fact, when you go into the New Testament, the Herodians, they were uh, Edomite converted to Jews. But anyway, um, so the first captivity was the Assyrian captivity, right? And after Assyrian, the Assyrian captivity, and the children of, of, of the southern kingdom saw what happened to the northern kingdom. So you would think that they would learn their lessons from observing what happened to the northern kingdom. But we didn't learn our lessons. In fact, we continued on in our idolic ways. And because of that came the king of Babylon and took control of, of Israel and carried them into captivity. And this story is told in 2 Kings uh, 24 and 14 and said, and he carried away all Jerusalem and all the princes and all the mighty men of valor, even 10,000 captive and all the craftsmen and smiths and none remain save the poorest sort of the people. Um, sec, um, Second Chronicles verse 36 and seven says, Nebuchadnezzar also carried off the vessels of the house of Yah to Babylon and put them in his temple at Babylon. And in Daniel 2 and 32, he said, this, this image, head was a fine gold, his breast and his arms of silver and his belly and his thighs of brass um, and his legs of iron, his feet part of iron and part of clay. 
and this was the, 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 the dream that Nebuchadnezzar had and Daniel interpreted the dream. But after the Assyrian captivity came the Babylonian captivity. And you can see that he took away the best of our people and left only the poorest um, ones in the land. So once again, because of our idolatry and our wicked behavior, we were taken by the Assyrians, the Northern Kingdom, then came Babylon, the Southern Kingdom. After Nebuchadnezzar, and that was around circa 606, 539 BC. Then came the Medes and the Persians, right? And um, so uh, in Daniel 530, it said, in that night was Belshazzar, the king of the Chaldeans slain, and Darius the Median took the kingdom being about three score and two years old. Um, kind of going back a little bit um, about um, the statue. Let me just back up uh, the slide a little bit. If you notice that the last kingdom, um, was Rome, which was the legs of iron, and which became a divided nation of uh, 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 with, with the toes and, and clay mixed together. So who was going to be the last kingdom reigning when the time of the Messiah comes? And you can see that it's going to be a mingled kingdom, but, but all roads lead back to Rome. All roads lead back to Rome. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more later. And so uh, after the Medes and Persians, then, then came the Greeks, then after the Greeks, then came the Romans, right? And so um, this is the reason why that scripture is, is Israel a home-born slave? Um, Isaiah 42 and 22 said, but this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes and they are hid in prison houses. They are for a prey and none delivereth for a spoil and none saith restore. You know, this scripture talks about the predicament that we as Yas people find ourselves in. That we have been robbed of our heritage We've been robbed of our languages. We've been robbed of our culture. We don't even know what to call ourselves. We were Negroes. We were African Americans. We were Blacks. We were, you know, we just go through all these, you know, trying to remake ourselves, you know, century after century. We've, we're trying to remake ourselves because we don't know who we are. Why? Because all of that was stolen from us. This is a people that is robbed and spoiled. We're laid up in prison houses and they are for a prey and none delivereth for a spoil and none saith restore. Isaiah 42, 23 says, who among you will give ear to this? Who will hearken and hear for the time to come? Who gave Jacob for a spoil and Israel to the robbers? Did not Yah, he against whom we have sinned, for they would not walk in his ways, neither were they obedient unto his laws. Therefore, he has poured upon him the fury of his anger and the strength of battle, and it has set him on fire round about, yet he knew not, and it burned him, yet he laid it not to heart. You know, um, I heard in um, recent times, you know, and I've actually had the same questions, is like, why do people hate us so much? What did we do to them? Why they hate us so much? And this explains it. It says, he had poured upon us his fury, the fury of his anger and the strength of battle. There's another scripture that said that I will strike him with the blows of an enemy. See, we don't know how angry we made the most high as a nation, right? There was another scripture that, that, that I, when I read that scripture, it brought tears to my eyes. Because when the Most High laid out everything that he did for us as a nation, he said, I brought you out of the land of Egypt with a strong hand and an outstretched arm. When you were thirsty, I gave you water from a flinty rock. When you were hungry, I gave you angels food. When you wanted meat, I gave you quail in abundance. When you, I, I led you by a cloud by day and a fiery pillar by night. I opened up the Red Sea and you crossed over on dry land. And he went through all the things that he did for us. And then he said, what more could I have done for you? What more could I have done? But yet we turned around and we spat in his face. We spat in his face and went worshiping other gods, right? And so he's, he became furious with us and poured out upon us his wrath. Um, 
in the U.S., and this is uh, from a, a 2018 population map or, or dia uh, graph, that if you look here in the U.S., we represent the column in gray um, represents Blacks in this country. We are about 13% of the population, approximately. 13% of the population, right? But when you go to the prison population, right, the Black the column for the Blacks is the one in blue. We represent 38% of the prison population. We're 13% of the US population, but we represent 38% of the prison population. This is a people robbed and spoiled, right? But not only that, when it comes to communicable diseases, Look at our women when it, of color are disproportionately affected by HIV and STDs. The orange section of this pie graph shows that Black Americans, Black African Americans represent 63% of diagnosis of HIV infection among adults and adolescent women by race and ethnicity. And this is a 2010 statistic, so it's a little dated, but still you get the idea right, that women account for 24% of newly reported aid cases, chlamydia and gonorrhea are highest among women than men and highest among African Americans, cervical cancers, um, African American women most likely to die from cervical cancers, and it goes on and on, right. Um, even, you know, um, I, I, I did, a, um, um, I, I have pulled up the statistics one time, it's in one of my other lessons, that when you look at abortions uh, amongst our women, you know, it is the highest amongst any other ethnic group. We are killing our babies at an alarming rate. And I think about it going back to the captivity of, of Egypt, how Pharaoh had, had, had put forth a decree that the, the Hebrew babies was to be killed by, the, by, the, by the, 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 uh, the midwives. And when they wouldn't do it, then he put forth a decree that they were to be cast into the, into the Nile River. And then when you look at um, what happened during the time of Isaiah, of Jesus, when, when um, the Magi's came looking for him and Herod heard about it and, you know, he's like, oh, come back and tell us when you find him so I can come and worship him. And when, when they were warned, no, go, don't go back that way, go a different way. The Bible said that Herod became enraged and put out an edict to slay all the Hebrew babies in Jerusalem. And not only that, but everyone in the outer countries. I mean, he slayed all the babies from I think two years down and, and less, right? And even today we're seeing where, where the, the rate of abortion since Roe v. Wade that we've killed more black babies than, than, than I think if I remember this, the, the, the statistics um, that when you take heart disease, cancer, uh, car accidents and all the other forms of death that and combine them that you don't even come close to the number of babies that we're losing in abortion clinics. And I'm not saying this to make anybody feel guilty, but I'm saying this to show a pattern of behavior that has plagued our people for centuries, for eons. Um, cognitive dissonance. In the field of psychology, cognitive dissonance occurs when a person holds contradictory beliefs, ideas, or values, and is typically experienced as psychological stress when they uh, when they participate in an action that goes against one or more of them. So when you have long held beliefs and new information is introduced, it creates a discomfort. And so we have to come to a psychological uh, 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 way of dealing with the discomfort is saying, okay, do I abandon my long held beliefs? Or do I abandon the new information and thus restore me to a level of comfort that I had before this new information was introduced, right? Um, according to this theory, when two actions or ideas are not psychologically consistent with each other, people do all in their power to change them until they become consistent. The discomfort is triggered by the person's belief clashing with new information perceived, wherein they try to find a way to resolve the contradiction to reduce their discomfort. That's cognitive dissonance. And so this is what I find that some of us are plagued with 
when new information is introduced into our orbit. And, you know, um, anyway, let me, let me uh, because I deal with this later on in the slide, so I don't want to get ahead of myself. Stockholm syndrome. This is another term um, in which uh, it's a condition in which hostages develop a psychological bond with their captors during captivity. Emotional bonds may be formed between captors and captives during intimate time together, but these are generally considered irrational in light of the danger or risk endured by the victims. I look at some of our people today and we quote from uh, European scholars. We, um, we, 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 everything, what we, what they say is gospel to us. We read their books. We go to seminary institutions that was built by them. The information that was a part of their core curriculum was, was established, determined, uh, by them. And so what they gave us was what they wanted us to know. And we just went right along with everything. We just went right along with everything. Why? Because we believe that, oh, you know, their, their, their scholars are so much more intellectual. They're well-studied. They're well-rounded. They, 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 they got this information on lock. You know, um, in my teaching a while back about uh, my sheep hear my voice. If you study the word, the Bible said that the things of the most high Yah is foolishness to the intellectual mind. See, you can't come with this thing from just your intellect. And I've said this before, that the, the word of the most high is by revelation. It is not by intellect. Yeah, you can read and you can break some things down intellectually, but a lot of the things are spiritual. It is spiritually discerned. If you even remember um, when uh, the disciples said to Isaiah, uh, to Jesus, why is it that you speak to the people in parables, but when you are with us, you break it down. He says, for it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom, but to them it is not given. See, there's some things that is not given to everybody. And so I have come to the point where I don't, first of all, this may sound funny to some of you all, but it was not meant for Europeans to teach us the ways of the most high Yah. See, this is where we are, we, we, there's a fallacy in our, in our, in the way how we think. Because the most high gave us his precious ordinances. We were to be the light to the Gentiles, not the Gentiles teaching us how to be, how to worship our Elimo. See, you know what, what the, 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 the story went that was told about <clears throat> when a woman came to Isaiah and said her daughter was sick and, you know, um, if he could heal her daughter. And he said, listen, it is not right for me to take the children's bread and give it to the dogs. And, and the woman responded by saying, yes, but the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. See, the way that the most, the order that the Most High had established was that his people was to be the ones that was eating at the table and the other nations was to benefit from joining with us in covenant relationship with the Most High. But what happened is the other nations are now the ones sitting at the table and we're the ones eating the crumbs. Anyway, um, Latter-day Revelations. <clears throat> Daniel 12 and verse 4 says, But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. So that means that in the time of the end, there's going to be new information that's going to come into light. Right? If we believe in the Bible, as we say we do, that means that there will come a time when new information will be introduced. And that is the time that we are finding ourselves in today. We call the internet the information superhighway. 
everything, everybody's running around with smartphones and tablets and everybody have access to the World Wide Web, WWW, World Wide Web, which means that you have access to information, even information that was written in other languages. You can take that information, copy that information, put it into Google Translate, and boom, it spits it out in your language. So information that was even unavailable to us because it was written in another language is now available to us today. You know, I said in one of my other teachings that, you know, uh, <clears throat> at the Tower, <clears throat> excuse me, the Tower of Babel, the Most High confounded the languages. Why? Because the people was on one accord and they were trying to build this tower up to the Most High, up to the heavens. And so he confused their language. But today we have now found ourselves once again back on the same page. That's why it's going to be easy to implement the, the one world government why? Because now we have access to where now we're all able to communicate one to another, even if you can't speak the language because of the World Wide Web. <clears throat> anyway, um, Daniel 12 verse 9 says, and he said, go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Once again, at the time of the end, new information will be revealed, right? So how are we going to respond to it? Um, verse 10 says, many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. See, one thing I'm seeing in this awakening that's going on, and as controversial as some people may think that it is, but everyone that I have seen who is a part of this awakening well, I shouldn't say everyone because there are some people that, you know, um, have taken this and have gone off the deep end with some things that they're saying, you know, especially some camps. I hear some teachings that I'm like, OK, see, the, 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 the Bible said the wheat and the tears are going to grow together to the day of harvest. Right. But those who are walking by the spirit of the most high. Yah, and you can tell those who are truly earnestly seeking the face of the most high Yah and wanting to return to a path of righteousness where we are, are, are obedient to the commandments of the most high. Because one of the things that Yesiah, Jesus himself said that if you love me, keep my commandments. You know, um, just uh, today it's funny because um, I had went into um, Home Depot, even though I tried to avoid Home Depot because I don't, you know, um, there's some things that, that, that the, the CEO stands for that I don't believe in. So I, I tried to go to Lowe's whenever I can. But anyway, Lowe's didn't have what I wanted. So I went into Home Depot and I bought uh, two items. One of the items was covered over in my cart. And when I got to my car, I realized I didn't pay for the item. It was only like 11 bucks for it. And right away, I heard a voice said, well, hey, just throw it in your car and just, just move along. And yet I heard the voice of the spirit says, no. That's stealing. You didn't pay for that item. So I took it, took the little item, walked back inside the store, paid for it, and walked out of there. Because I don't want something like that to stop the flow of my anointing and the favor of the Most High Yah in my life. Okay, so when it comes on to this flesh, I realize that I don't want anything to get in the way of my anointing. I am striving to live my life in a righteous way by the spirit of the Most High Yah. And so many of the people that I see who are a part of this awakening is striving to get back to serving the most high in the true way, not in the way that that people think that we have the liberty to do whatever the heck we want to, then we can come back and repent and go back and do what we want to and come back and repent. And, you know, that's just, I just, for me, I don't want anything getting in the way of my anointing. I don't want anything getting in the way of the favor of the most high on my life because nothing is worth it, right? Um, in, in 2 Timothy verses three, ver, uh, 2 Timothy three verse one, it says, this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, plow, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection. When uh, we know that we just got through this Derek Chauvin trial, and one of the things that I saw during um, what he did to George Floyd, and even that I am seeing now, even after the verdict, we saw a, 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 a lynching 
and you can call it anything else you want to, but that was a murder that we saw in plain view for the whole world to see. But yet you have people. I remember after after he he, he died, there was people going around, you know, uh, I'm naked clowning, you know. Oh look, I have my knee on his neck. I didn't. He didn't die from that. You got you got you uh, uh, Caucasians out here mocking the death of this man, right? You, you and and even after the verdict, you have people saying, "Oh, uh, the, the 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 jury was not was 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 pressured into giving a guilty verdict because they didn't want to see people rioting." Listen, every time I hear a Caucasian talk about rioting and looting, I'm I'm saying, "Wait a minute, do you forget who your ancestors were?" Some of the biggest looters, how you robbed the indigenous people of their land, how you robbed our people of their culture, how you stole us from our, listen, don't talk to me about robbers and spoilers and looters, okay? So anyway, without natural affection is my point, right? Is that you have some people that have no natural affection. They can see a man gunned down, shot in the back, unarmed, and say, oh, well, you know, maybe he, should have, he shouldn't have ran, you know? And, and, and it's like, maybe that's just, you know, to us. And, and, and that's, that's, that's something that we're, we're accustomed to seeing. But every time I see that, I'm saying, my God, you know, where have we come as a people, you know, where we can see horrible things happen to other individuals and have no heart of compassion. Anyway, um, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those who are good. When you want to stand up for righteousness and call wrong, wrong, and evil, evil, the Bible says, woe unto them that call evil, good, and good, evil. This is what we're seeing in these last days. If you speak out against things such as homosexuality, against abortion, against against you know a sin and 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 and, and people shacking up, oh, oh, oh you, you, what makes you think you're so righteous, right? When Moses came and saw two of his brethren fighting and he's trying to break them up, he's like, who who do you think you are? You gonna kill us like you killed that Egyptian? You know, this is this is anyway. Um, despisers of those that are good. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of Yah, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. Having a form of godliness. You know, there's a scripture that says these people, they worship me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. And I'm, you know, we're seeing a lot of that even in modern, the modern churches today, people will get up there, they'll sing on the choir, but yet the next minute they're up there shacking up with someone. Pastor will be up there preaching fiery messages, but next, next thing you find that he's, you know, caught up in some adulterous affair or something. And it's just things that we're just noticing that, that it's just, you know, it's an indictment on us as a people to the things that we have allowed to infiltrate into our lives. We have become so secular and so worldly in our, in our ways. We dress like the world. We talk like the world. We behave like the world. We want to be like the world. When the Bible is telling us that the love of, if you are loved, if you love the world, that the love of Yah is not in you. See, you, there is no false equivalency. You can't merge righteousness and unrighteousness, right? The, 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 the carnal nature of the world is an enmity against the nature of the Most High Yah. So you have to decide on what you're going to stand for. Are you going to stand for the Most High who's telling you that you're supposed to be a holy nation, a royal priesthood, right? We're not supposed to be, be a part of the world. We're in the world, but we're not supposed to be a part of the world. Um, response to new information. 1 Corinthians 2.9 says, but as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which Yah has prepared for them that love him. But Yah hath revealed them unto us by his spirit, for the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of Yah. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of a man, which is in him? Even so, the things of Yah knoweth no man but the spirit of Yah. So 
now we have not received, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of Yah, uh, but the spirit which is of Yah, that we might know the things that are freely given unto us. So when you start talking about the spirits, you know, when you really go back and study it, that there are spirits that rule over the nations. There are spirits that rule over the nations. And I, I did this in one of my other teachings. I'm going to get into it. But if you go back to the book of Daniel, and I forget what, what chapter it is off the top of my head, but, you know, this was when he had set his heart to pray and the most I sent Gabriel to bring him a message and the prince of Persia resisted him for 21 days and Michael had to come and assist him so that he can come and deliver the message. And he said, when I'm done, I'm going to go back and fight with the prince of Persia. And after him comes the prince of Greece or the king of Greece, I think it said. So my point is that there are spirits that govern the nations. The spirit that the Most High gives to us is a different spirit than that, that which is of the nations. So if you are a part of the, the nations and you're following the cue of the nations, then what spirit are you in? Um, uh, going uh, to verse 13 says, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. See, I see things as there are frequencies, right? And I mentioned this, um, I think, in the one my sheep hears my voice, that if you're tuned into a television station, for instance, I can go anywhere in the United States, and if I, or even in the world internationally, if I can get to, to MSNBC, for instance, I'm going to see the same programming of, on MSNBC, whether I'm here in, in, in Florida, or whether I'm in California, or whether I'm on, across the other side of the world, if it is the same television station, we're going to see the same programming. As it is in the natural, so it is in the spiritual realm. That when you're on the same frequency, when you're on the same channel, you're going to receive the same words. That's why the Bible said that there is no private interpretation of scripture. If you are, if, if you have a prophetic anointing on your life, then you are tapped into the prophetic frequencies. You're going to get prophetic words, whether you're here in America or whether you're all the way in the continent of Africa or whether you're in Australia, whether you're in Hawaii. If you have the prophetic anointing on your life and you're in the prophetic uh, frequency, you're going to receive the same prophetic words. The same thing if you're if, if you have discerning spirit of discernment, you know, you're going to get the same kind of discernment in these last days, the spirit of the most high is being is revealing greater and greater mysteries unto those who are, have ears to hear and eyes to see. But because this is new information that's being introduced into our orbit, many of us are going to experience cognitive dissonance and we have to decide on how we're going to respond to that new information. Um, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of Yah, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned, right? But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is, is judged of no man. For who knoweth the mind of Yah that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Yesiah, of Christ, right? Once again, who knows the mind of Yah that we might instruct him? That goes back to what I was saying is how arrogant we've become in these days. To tell the most high, one of the things that, that just gets me, it gets under my skin when I hear people say this, that when we start to tell people that we are the people of the most high, that he chose a people unto himself, and that is people that look like us, right? When it was a Caucasian, Everybody was cool with it, even though we never examined the evidence of why they say that they are the chosen people, right? But now more and more evidence is coming out to the contrary to say that they don't match the prophecies, but there is a group of people that fits the prophecies to the T and they happen to look like me and you. And we can show evidence after evidence after evidence, but people will look at you and say, oh, it doesn't matter. And what you're saying to the most high is that your choice does not matter. He said, I chose a people for myself. Out of all the other nations, I chose a people for myself. It is his choice. Who are we to tell him that his choice doesn't matter? Who is it that can instruct him? Anyway, um, 
Luke 8, 17 says, for nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be made, be, be known and come abroad. So once again, things are being revealed in these last days. How are you going to respond to it? Fulfillment of prophecies. Matthew 24, verse 21 says, For then shall great be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor ever shall be. And except those days be shortened, should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, Believe it not, for there shall arise false Christ and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Recently, there's been a big thing on the internet floating around about this person that, you know, in modern day Israel, they're saying is the Messiah. He re recently came out and said, no, no, that's not true and whatever. But, you know, I saw some of the images and they're worshiping this man like he's the, he's the Messiah. And, you know, when the Bible said that, you know, uh, in, the, in the last days, many false prophets shall arise and say, you know, I come in the, in the, in the, in the authority of Messiah, I, of Christ. The Bible says that when he comes, everybody's going to know it. But these false prophets that are going to arise, don't think that there is not power in the darkness of this world. See, demons have power. The fallen ones have power. And they can give their power to those who are um, influenced by them. See, the Bible talks about how in the book of Revelation that the, the dragon is going to give his power to the antichrist and to the false prophet. And they're going to be able to perform miracles. But see, if you don't have the spirit of discernment, then when you see these miraculous things <clears throat> that, that the false Christ or the false prophet's going to do, <clears throat> you're going to run behind them, right? But the Bible said, if it was possible, they would deceive the very elect. So why isn't it possible for them to deceive the elect? Because the spirit of the most high will reveal to us that, no, that one, uh-uh. And, and, and one of the things that I, 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 can, I can truly say is that when you have the spirit of the most high, you'll see these persons. You know, you can look into somebody's eyes and say, mm, that one has a demon. There are demons walking around us, people people that are, that are possessed by demons. You can look into some people's eyes. I look into Kenneth Copeland's eyes and I see a demon. I look into Donald Trump's face and in his eyes and I see demons. My wife says she, he's got legions. I look into people like, like, like Vladimir Putin and I see, I see demons, right? These people are influenced by demons, right? But we can believe it or not, there are many people walking around on this earth that's under the, under the influence of demons. Anyway, <clears throat> um, verse 32, um, Matthew 24, verse 32 says, now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and put it forth leaf, you know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. For as it was, verse 38 says, for as it was in the days um, that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Um, I've heard teachings in the past about that this talks about the rapture, that, you know, just as how, you know, the people is going to be taken away, you're going to be, this was not talking about the rapture. See, this was talking about Noah was warning the people that it was going to rain for 120 years. And the people, they would mock him. They would scorn him. They would laugh at him. Look at this crazy old fool building this big giant boat in the middle of a dry land. And what does he think he's doing? For 120 years, 
he was warning the people. That time came when the Most High said, it's time to gather the animals and get in the ark. When the Most High shut the doors, that was it. Noah was locked up on the inside, sealed, and when that flood came, it took all the other people away. In, the, in one of the apocryphal books, the story is expanded to say that the people began to beat on the door saying, Noah, let us in. We believe you now. Why are you going to let us die? But the Most High said, nah, uh-uh. There was one, one, one play, person that said that he, the Most High sealed up the door because maybe Noah might have gotten you know, kind hearted and you know, would have sought to open the door. And had he done that, they would have threw him out, threw out all the animals. And they were, I remember the movie, um, um, War of the Worlds. And um, the part that was played, I think it was by Tom Cruise when he told his, uh, his son, um, listen, don't go into the town. You know, they had one of the few cars that was working or whatever. And he says, stay on the, out, the, the, the outside, don't go into the town. And he let his son drive and fell asleep. When he woke up, here's his son driving through the town. And he's like, did I tell you not to come through here? And, and no sooner had he said that, somebody carjacked him. And when that person carjacked him, the carjacker got carjacked. And before long, they, they fought and the car crashed and he got killed. And they ended up on foot. And so that just kind of reminded me that had Noah opened that door, that would have been the end of Noah. Um, but there again, you know, there was warnings going on before the flood came and took them all away. Stiff necked. Isaiah 1 3 says, The ox knoweth his owner and the ass his master's crib, but Israel doth not know my people doth not consider. This is a scripture that I've often, you know, quoted that, you know, <laughs> Even the dumb animals, the ox is one of the dumbest animals according to man, but he know who owns him. And the ass is another person that somebody calls you a jackass, it's an insult. But at least a jackass knows his master's crib. But we who are supposed to be so smart and so intellectual, we don't even know who we are. And not only that, but we don't consider. And when people are trying to tell us, it doesn't matter, see, when we hear the evangelical community say, oh, you need to watch the nation of Israel because they're the time clock that you need to watch. They're the time clock. When Israel become a nation again, then that's what Israel has been a nation since 1948. How has things changed? Um, the next thing is, well, Israel, one day he's, they're, they're, they're going to receive the Messiah. But see, true, Israel has already received the Messiah. We didn't care what color he was. We just wanted to worship. We didn't care whether he was white, black, or, or, or pink or purple. So we received the Messiah. True, Israel has already received the Messiah. The only difference now is we're recognizing that he was a black man. He had hair like wool and feet like bronze is burned in the fire. We're no longer accepting the Eurocentric teaching that, oh, that's only metaphorical. We're not accepting the fact that he came from a region where it was black people. <laughs> Anyway, Israel does not know. The true Israel do not know who they are, neither do they consider. Romans 11.25 says, For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceit, that blindness is in part happened to Israel, isolele, until the fullness of the Gentiles come in. Right? So what does that mean? That means that there is a time of the Gentiles, and when that time has been fulfilled, then the blindness, the partial blindness that was upon Israel, Isolele, is going to be lifted. And this is what we are seeing now in these times. We look at what is happening around us. Everything that's all oh, we this 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 one of the, the volcanoes that's erupting has not erupted in 800 years. Some of the weather phenomena we're seeing, we hear meteorologists saying, "Oh, we've not seen this for hundreds of years." Geologically, things are going on in the earth. Earthquakes in diverse places, as the Bible talks about. The Bible talks about there be signs in the heavens and on earth below, blood and vapors and 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 and, and, and pillars of smoke or something like that you know you're seeing all these signs all over and taken individually they may not seem significant but when taken collectively there's plagues of locusts going on there's been blood rivers everywhere there's been there's been uh, 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 all kind of, of 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 just weird things happening around the earth weird sounds and 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 all kinds of things going on all the while people are waking up and saying we are the children of israel we are the children of isolele people of color 
Anyway, um, this is in the book of Baruch, and I know um, some of you may not read any of the apocryphal books, but once again, it was in the original Bible prior to 1619, or 1619 King James Version, I think, before, and before then. And it is still in use in some of the Ethiopian Bibles and in other Bibles, the apocryphal books. But this is from the book of Baruch, chapter 2, and verse 29 says, If ye will not hear my voice, surely this very great multitude shall be turned into a small number among the nations where I will scatter them. We are a minority amongst all the nations where we have been scattered. Our numbers have been suppressed. We are being killed. We are, we are killing our babies. We are a small number in the lands of our captivity, right? For I knew that they would not hear me because it is a stiff necked people, but in the land of their captivity, they shall remember themselves. Isn't that what's going on right now in this awakening? People can believe it or not, but it is, it is, it is right now they're starting to shut down people's YouTube channels. I was hearing the other day, um, Watchman and his wife were saying that they're starting to shut down their whited out video series. And um, you know, one of the whited out video series was what helped me in this awakening, right? But they're starting to shut down people's channels. And if you speak too boldly about this stuff or you speak too boldly about those who are pretending to be us and are not, they're the ones who control these channels. And I responded back in one of my comments, I said, this shouldn't have come as a surprise to us. I'm surprised it took this long to happen. I just believe that they were trying to figure out a way how to do it without seeming like they're being prejudiced against people of color. But now they're finding that the movement is going, is coming along so strongly that they're like, no, we can't sit back and let this continue to happen. We have to start shutting people down because people are getting thousands of views on their channels. Some are getting over a million views. And so this awakening is taking up steam and they're doing everything in their powers to stop it. But see, this is the one thing that they don't understand. I remember in the Bible when um, uh, it was, I think it was um, one of the councils where some of the, 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 the Pharisees and the Sadducees had gotten together and said, what are we gonna do about these, these people who are preaching about Yesiah? He said, they're convincing a lot of people and, and we gotta stop these people because see, they had the authority over the people and they loved the authority that they had, but they saw a movement beginning to happen that was turning the people away from the authorities of the scribes and the Pharisees and turning them to Yesiah and to his, doc, his gospel. And so, you know, they were thinking, well, should we kill them? Should we throw them in jail? What should we do with these people? And Gamaliel, remember Paul said he learned at the feet of Gamaliel. Well, it's the same Gamaliel. He said something that was very wise. He said, listen, you remembered what happened to so-and-so? He, he had a following too, but because it was of not of the most high, it, 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 it went to nothing. It diminished and, you know, people went their separate ways. And you remember so-and-so? Well, he had a bunch of people that followed him too, but that amounted to nothing. And if these, so, so if these men, if what they're doing is not of the most high, then it's not going to amount to anything. But if it is of the most high, then you better be careful that you don't find yourself fighting against the most high himself. Because when you fight against the most high, your hands are too short to box with Yah. You will not win. So it doesn't matter what they're going to do to try to shut this thing down. They can shut down all the channels. This movement is going to be self-perpetuating. It's like a snowball rolling down a hill. It's only going to pick up momentum. But also while this is picking up momentum, you're going to find that things are going to get worse and worse. I think we're doing our people a disservice when, when, when if you're a minister and you're out there telling people that things are going to get better and, oh, we're going to get through this and things are going to return to normal, you're doing the people a disservice. The Bible said, I have placed people to be a watchman upon the wall. And if you see the sword coming and you do not warn the people that they're going to die, but their blood is going to be on your shoulder. But if you warn the people, you sound the alarm and they don't want to listen to you, they're going to die. But at least their blood will not be on your shoulder. So you better take heed to what you're doing and what you're telling the people. OK, you need to tell the people the truth, because if not, their blood is going to be on your shoulder. Um, it says uh, verse 30 um, for th verse 31 said, um, and shall know that I am uh, the Lord their God, for I will give them a heart to hear, uh, a heart and ears to hear, and they shall praise me in the land of their captivity and think upon my name and um, return from their stiff neck 
and from their wicked deeds, for they shall remember the way of their fathers, which sinned before Yah. And I will bring them again into the land which I promised with an oath unto their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and they shall be lords of it, and I will increase them, and they shall not be diminished. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them to be their Elimo, and they shall be my people, and I will no more drive my people of Isolele out of the land that I have given them. So there's coming a time when he's going to restore us. In Isaiah 60 and verse 1, it says, Arise and shine, for thy light has come, for the glory of Yah is risen upon you. See, the Most High now, because we have come to the end of our period of captivity, that his face is going to return back to his people. But there is a shifting going on. And what I was, I was telling my wife, I says, listen, power does not concede power willingly. Power will not concede power willingly. But there is a shifting going on in the atmosphere. And while the shifting is going on, Esau is going to do everything he can to hold on to power. But it is not going to stop because this is ordained by the Most High Yah. As second Ezra verse 6 and 9 says, For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that follows. And this is what we're seeing happening. There is a transition that is occurring. Ezekiel 12 verse 27 said, Son of man, behold, they of the house of Esolele say, The vision that he seeth is for many days to come, and he prophesieth of the times that are far off. <coughs> Excuse me. Therefore, say unto them, thus saith uh, Yah our Elimo, there shall none of my words be prolonged any more, but the word which I have spoken shall be done, saith the Lord God. So what if what many people are saying, you know, when Ezekiel was 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 prophesying to them, they're like, oh, what you're talking about is from way in the future to come. It's it's it's, it's not going to happen no time soon. Well, one of the questions that I ask, if, if not now, then when? We talk about biblical prophecies. It's going to happen in someone's generation. It's going to happen in someone's generation. So if not now, then when? 400 years. Everybody's talking about this 400-year period. All this craziness that we're seeing around the world. If not now, then when? Second Peter verse three and one says the second epistle beloved I now write unto you in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandments of us the apostles of the Lord and Savior knowing this that there shall come in the last day scoffers walking after their own lust and saying where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. See, that's the mindset that's going to catch many of us off guard. The Bible, there's another scripture that says you can look at the weather, at, 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 the, at the skies and, and say, oh, it's going to be a hot day today or it's going to be a, a, a rainy day today. He says, how can you discern the weather and you can't discern the times? Because we're seeing all these signs, but yet some of us are just saying, oh, it's just a natural phenomenon. It's just, you know, we try to write it off. But there again, um, that's what's going to catch, just like the days of Noah. People going about their regular lives and not paying attention until it becomes too late. Second Thessalonians 2 verse 7 says, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Um, and then, then shall the wicked be revealed whom... The Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. See, as the Most High, the Bible said, when, when he, the spirit of truth has come, that he will lead you into all truth. One of the things that I, I, I say to my, 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 my Christian brethren is that, listen, there is things that are being revealed. And if you are a shepherd of a flock, it is your responsibility 
to search diligently, to turn over every rock, to sweep under every corner. It is your responsibility to find out what is this truth. And if you, if you don't believe what it is that people are telling you about this awakening, then do the research for yourself, right? It is not that hard to find the information, you know, and, 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 and yet still we want to, we, we want to stick our heads in the sand and pretend that these things are not happening. Well, once again, the most high is going to hold people accountable for the truth that he's revealing in these last days. You don't have a choice as to what to do with the truth. If people are going to be offended by the truth, then let them be offended. It is not about keeping behinds in the pews. If people are going to get offended and walk away, then let them get offended and walk away. I'd rather deal with 10 people who are abiding in truth than 100 or 1,000 that are abiding in deception and lies. Um, uh, where am I? Second Timothy uh, uh, 2.11 says, and for this cause, Yah shall send them strong delusions that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. We don't have a choice on what to do with the truth. You can't manipulate truth. You can't suppress truth. You can't know the truth and not release the truth, okay? Because the most high is gonna hold you responsible. See, we're all ignorant of something. None of us knows everything. But what the Most High is going to hold us accountable is when he reveals information to us, whether by revelation, whether by the voice of the prophetic or the prophets, or the, the, the prophets that he's raising up in these last days, whether it's people that are having dreams and visions and is revealing these things to you. But because we have built our little paradigms based upon uh, uh, things that were not um, that we did in ignorance, let's put it that way. But now that the truth is being revealed, you cannot claim ignorance anymore. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> Revelation 12, 7, and um, I'm going to be wrapping up in these last couple of passages. It says, and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world world, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels was ca were cast out with him, right? So there is a deception that has deceived the whole world, right? And when you look at it, all roads lead back to Rome. I don't want to get too deep into that because that's a whole nother topic, but all roads lead to Rome. Um, for such are false, uh, Second Colossians verse 11 and 13 says, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And, and no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Uh, therefore, it is, of, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Um, I'm gonna end here. And <clears throat> listen, I'm not, you know, I, I know that, look, people may reject the word, this word, and that's fine. You know, um, I'm not here to brain wrestle with anybody, and I'm not here to offend anybody. I'm just saying that we are living in different times now. And if you cannot see that, then you are prophetically blind. You know, things are, 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 are heating up. And, you know, um, I'm seeing where all kind of wars and rumors of war, Russia with Ukraine, Israel with Iran, Syria, what's going on over there, and Jordan, what's going on. It's like there's just this, 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 well, biblical prophecy, because that's what the Bible says. He says, when you see all these things, look up because your redemption draws nigh. We can be like those who said, oh, our, all things continue the way they have since our aunts, our forefathers fell asleep. Okay, keep believing that. Keep on believing that. But even in his judgment, the most high is pouring it out in measures. It's, it's like a woman in labor pains, right? You ladies who have been pregnant, you know that when that baby is coming and that contra those contractions start, it starts off, they're spacing, and, and it's, short, it's, it's, it's shorter durations. But as it gets closer and closer to the time of birth, 
the spacing becomes shorter, the contractions come faster, they are stronger and they last longer. This is what is happening. The Bible says, even says it, it's like a woman who's suddenly taking, you know, caught, uh, caught up in the pangs of birth pain. This is birth pain that we're seeing. The Bible says all of creation is groaning. What do you think groaning, the creation groaning looks like? Earthquakes, volcanic eruption, uh, 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 floods, uh, 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 plagues of locusts, red rivers. Creation is groaning because it is, it is about to bring forth birth. Anyway, um, I thank you all for the opportunity once again to come before you. Um, I hope this message will help some of us. Some of us are going to just, you know, continue on, you know, in our ways, ignoring things like this. And that's fine. You know, I, the Bible says every man has to work out his own or her own salvation with fear and trembling. You know, I just know from my, from my sake, I'm going to do what the Most High has placed upon my heart to do. Whether people receive it or not, you know, I'm, I don't have, you know, tens of thousands of followers. Um, and, and I, you know, I, I do this because I know what the most high have placed in my heart. And so whoever is designed to reach, it'll reach. My sheep will hear his voice. His sheep will hear his voice. And if I'm speaking of my own accord, then nobody will hear. But if this word was meant to be to, for someone, if it's even one person, if it's even one person that this word can reach and impact their lives, that they can, they can take the blinders off, that they can cleanse their mind of Eurocentric teachings, of the Eurocentric mind perspectives on the scripture, and just let the word and let the Holy Spirit speak to you, you will begin to see that, 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 that we are the people of the most high. It's not that salvation is only for us because the door of salvation is open to everyone. Right by by Isaiah, believe in believe in Christ as the world call him, ha, Yeshua Hamashiach as some others, others call him. There's only one door, right? But the Bible also says that salvation to the Jews first, the Yaounde first, then then also to the Gentiles. The Most High has a chosen people, and because of our wickedness and the wickedness of our ancestors, we were we were punished severely. We were humbled by him. And what did he say in Romans? I believe it was 11. He said he did it to, to, so that to, to make us jealous, <clears throat> to make us jealous. So he was telling the Gentiles, he's like, don't rejoice. Don't rejoice in our, in our suffering because just by the same token, how he broke some of us off so that you Gentiles can be grafted in. It's easier to re-engraft us back into the, the, into the original vine than you who was the wild olive branches. That's word. So anyway, um, Thank you, uh, Matondo, uh, Betuabu, uh, and um, in Zambi, uh, Aku Benisha, may the Most High bless you. And until um, the Most High inspires me to do another teaching, um, I will talk to you all um, another time. May the Most High bless.